playoffs are around the corner. Six matches remain in the closing stage before we get there. All I know about the playoffs is four teams make it. The top team gets through straight to the grand final, yet there are still two semifinals. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Let's just get there and find out. Of course, I say that, but we won't play the actual playoffs until Monday. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mr. Cellophane. Welcome to episode number 45 of the American Dream. I hope you have had a fantastic week. And make sure, as always, if you've enjoyed yourself watching this series, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out and keeps these videos coming. We have six matches left to go. Santos is first on the docket. They are 4-4-8 four, four, and eight, sitting on 16 points. We're in second place, one point behind Punta Arenas. That was a position that we ceded to them yesterday after going wire to wire through the first, I believe, 14 of the 16 matches that have been played. If we end up on top of the table, we will make it to the grand final. Do we go straight to the grand final? Is there a match before the grand final? I don't know. We're going to find out together because remember, we joined the team for the second leg of the grand final of the opening stage. Confused? I guarantee you will be by the time we are done. My plan is to get right to the nitty gritty because I want to have the match against Santos. We do have a match coming up against Punta Arenas and, of course, the final match of the season so we can see how it all ends up. But first, got to bring you the news that Saprisa is close to a takeover agreement. Now, we had just gotten a news item a couple of days ago that the takeover was on the rocks and probably falling apart. But I guess it is back up. On, so we will figure that out. Hopefully, this all gets resolved by the time the summer transfer window opens up because there will be changes. Well, we didn't have to wait very long. Christopher Camacho has completed a $17 million takeover of Saprisa. Apparently, we just went public. Whether or not the takeover results in more funds for the club is not the most pressing concern to me. It is that the transfer embargo has been lifted. Obviously, we're not in the transfer window right now. But the summer transfer window is going to be very important because it was pointed out to me in Discord that I have still been running this team with money, just like Vancouver that had zero resources. And I need to free my mind and improve this squad. So we will be doing that over the summer. Meanwhile, though, we've got the matter of Santos at hand right now. Cortez is going to get the starting goal. It's going to be a back four of Casada Thorne, Innocente, Gubane, and Herrera. Aquista and Bran are going to be in the midfield. Marrera at the number 10. Ramon and Castro on the wings with Edward Lopez leading the line and leading the team with 18 goals. Coming off a pretty good performance in yesterday's episode, let's hope it can carry over into this one. We are on the road and we have struggled a little bit away from home. And by struggle, I mean just most of our losses have come away from home. Not that we have lost a ton. Throwing deep in our zone to get things started for Santos. Rojas playing it into Portillo. Back for Rojas, finds Morales. Portillo, a nice little triangle they've got going in the far corner. Into the middle and into the back of the net. Wilbert Gonzalez with his 14th goal of the year. And Santos leads 1-0. And that was not the start that we were looking to get off to. These final third throw-ins are so very dangerous. Now, usually, the play doesn't take this long to develop. But Gonzalez rising up between two Saprisa defenders and giving Santos the 1-0 lead. Brown sending it in, looking for Herrera toward the back post. Gonzalez will clear it. Chasing it down is Johnny Castro, who has picked up a little bit of a knock already. Herrera in the box. Back for Innocente, feeding Castro, moving to his left, and Castro with the left foot will put it past Barrientos for his second. No, he won't. Somehow he was deemed to be offside, even though he had the ball for a good 10 seconds. Before he scored the goal, maybe there was another player in the way of the goalkeeper. Whatever it was, the goal isn't going to count, so we're just going to have to try it again. Casada Thorne throwing it in. Marrera along the sideline, flipping it toward the edge of the box. He's got Lopez looking back post. Can't pick out uh, Johnny Castro, and Portillo is going to come away with it for Santos. Portillo still with acres of space up that left side. Guys, what are you doing? Cortez comes out. Can't hang on to it. The loose ball drops to Wilbert Gonzalez, 
and he has his second goal of the match. And I, my friends, am absolutely fuming at this performance so far because it has just been sloppiness and carelessness that has gotten in the way of Saprisa having any success in this match. And Santos looking for a third, moving it up the right wing. Espinoza has a man on him, but again, not really challenging. Pereventayo, Espinoza into the middle. The shot from Morales is going to go wide. It'll be a goal kick. Errant pass there. Marrero can't get there. Santos takes back over. Portillo up the far sideline. Gets past his man. Drops it back. Rojas, Castillo for Gonzalez, who has been so dangerous. Into the middle. How did he miss that? Well, it was blocked by Innocente. That's how. Corner coming up for Santos. And we are going to demand more from our team right now because we have been I was going to say pathetic but that's just my emotions getting the best of me we have just been unimpressive only three shots on goal in that first half one on target Gonzalez with the two goals for Santos is the difference in the match so far I'm not replacing any personnel at the half but we did make sure that they knew how terrible we thought their performance was. Sadly, not a lot going on in the early going of this second half. First highlight goes to Santos. Sinclair off of the throw in. Fajardo, Gonzalez to uh, Perevertayo. Back for Espinoza. Finds Morales and his shot on the half volley will go high and wide. All right, now we are going to make changes. Castro's coming out. Guillermo Sanchez will take his place on the left side. Marrera will cede his position to Esteban Cordero, who will swap places with Edward Lopez, because Lopez is more designed for that uh, attacking midfield position. Um, boo, who else? Daniel Herrera, come on out. Uh, Gerald Taylor will come in at the right wingback position. Three changes made with about 25 minutes remaining in this match. And so far, Saprisa not being able to pull off a single shot on goal. Meanwhile, the team that we are chasing won their match the day before. So we are now four points off of the top of the table. And it looks like that is where we are going to stay unless things change massively between now and then. Cortez getting things started again to Quesada Thorn in Asente in control. We're just not able to move it up. Our guys are being very tightly marked at the moment. Aquista the Braun. Out wide. Quesada Thorn will push it forward up the sideline for Ramon. Has two men on him. Tries to knock it past his opponent. Ramon into the middle. Lopez gets his head on it. And Edward Lopez charging forward from the number 10 position. Picking up his 19th goal of the year to make it Santos 2, Saprisa 1. And two things happened here. First off, beautiful cross by Ramon. Second off, Barrientos came out to try to make the play. And frankly, he failed. Brand with a free kick. Three and a half minutes left to go in regular time. From about 30 yards out. He will probably take a direct shot. Yes, except it's going to skim over the crossbar and go out for a goal kick. Brand had a decent look, but sadly it uh, did not come to fruition. And we are going to run out of time. Three minutes added on. We'll come and go and we fall on the road. Two to one. So while we may have the manner of making up four points at the top of the table, we have an even bigger issue if we can't get past Alajuelense in the Clasico Nacional Derby. Off of the corner, though, we were able to take a 1-0 lead. The back post header by Rogerio for Alajuelense was able to tie things up at 1. We were able to break through in the 55th minute. Ball forward to Lopez, waited for a support, and that came in the form of Stefan Aquista putting it home to make it 2-1 Saprisa, and he would add another as Ramon played it back to Lopez, who clanked it off of the post. Aquista stepping up, picking the pocket of the Alajuense defender and putting it home for his second goal of the match. Gerald Taylor sent off in the 82nd minute, but we were able to withstand uh, being down to 10 men for the final eight minutes plus stoppage time and 3-1 was the final score. We came back home victorious.
Perez Zeladon up next, and this time on the road, and this time proving to be a bit more of a challenge than they were the last as Daly's feed to Johnston put them up 1-0. They held that lead through halftime. However, in the second half, we came back. A quick pass from Ramon to Marrera, put past Alfaro to make it 1-1. Perez Zeladon, though, would recapture the lead just a couple of minutes later. Espinoza into the box, tucking it inside the near post to make it 2-1. Ramon, free kick, clatters it off of the post and in. To tie things up at 2, Ramon would follow through from the spot to make it 3-2, Saprisa. 4-2 would be your score as the ball fed through the Lopez, beating Alfaro 1-on-1. On one. Perez Zeladon, though, was not done. Off of the short corner, Ceballos sending it into the box. Acosta settling it down, finding Pemberton, who finds the back of the net to make it 4-3. However, we would be able to hold on. Saprisa picking up back-to-back -back victories, and it could not come at a better time. Because not only are we squaring off at home against Punta Arenas, we are doing so back at the top of the table. Punta Arenas got knocked off by Sporting FC in their last match. So we were able to leapfrog them again. We're now two points ahead of Punta Arenas. Alajuelense just lost in the match the day before. They are now six points behind us. And we hold a game in hand. So we can really take this league by the scruff of the you-know-what. I'm mixing my metaphors again. It will not be as easy a test, though, as we would like to think. Manuel Cortez has picked up an injury, pulled some ankle ligaments in training just a couple of days ago. He's going to be out for about two weeks, so he will not be starting in goal for this match. And even though he has been on the bench for the last couple, because we have not been rotating through, we're kind of Sticking with what's been working, we will not have the services of Esteban Cordero. He's got 16 goals on the year, which makes him our second leading scorer. And he also suffered sprained ankle ligaments. Two to three weeks, he's going to be on the shelf. So we're opting for David Hernandez in goal and a little bit of reinforcements on the back line on the bench as Gerald Taylor comes back into the side. Remember, he was sent off for that red card, so he has served his suspension. He is back. Hernandez will be in between the sticks. It's Gonzalez, Innocente, Gubane, and Herrera on the back line. Chacon and Aquista in the midfield. Marrera manning the 10. Quesada, Thorn, and Ramon on the wings. And Edward Lopez looking to add to his 20-goal season. Leading the line is our striker. Even though we are expected to win this match, we are under no illusions that it is going to be an easy time. Two consecutive victories for us, two consecutive losses for Punta Arenas. Which team is going to have the form tonight? The one on the rise or the one on the fall looking to bounce back? I'm hoping it's the one on the rise because that's us. Into our end, Aquista will head it forward. Marrera, he's got it. Feeds it through. Ramon, quick shot with the left foot. And he's got 11 on the year. And it's a Prisa 1. Punta Arenas nil. So far in this first half, it has been the team that is already hot. Heating up and getting hotter. Ball 1. Lopez. Up for Casada Thorn. Bit of a heavy touch. So Messin will take over for Punta Arenas. Ayu sending it long. Gonzalez stepping in front of uh, the Punta Arenas player. Chacon in control. Ramon. Dropping it back to him at the midfield stripe. Once again to Ramon, pushing up that right wing, but Araya will take over. Torres in control with some space. Finds Mendez up the left wing. Has to stop and control the ball. Giving the opportunity for Saprisa to get men back. Alfaro, though, is going to pick up the clearance. Alfaro with the shot will clatter off of the crossbar and go out behind the byline for a goal kick. So a couple of uh, tense moments there. For Saprisa, as we just could not maintain control. Both our left and our right wingers getting a little untidy with their dribbles. That's something that hopefully they will work on as the match continues. 
But so far, even though they're getting shots on goal, only one on target for Punta Arenas. Off of the corner kick, Innocente will clear it, but Torres will track it down. Lots of bodies forward for Punta Arenas right now. Araya into the middle finds Mahecha, who finds the back of the net, his fifth of the year. And Punta Arenas has managed to equalize at one. I mean, even though we had more defenders than they had offensive players in the box, it still seemed like a numbers game that favored Punta Arenas. And that is where we are going to end the first half. 1-1 one, one is your score. Four shots to six in favor of the away side. We have managed to control the possession. If we can keep doing that for the rest of the match, I think we're going to be okay. Now, we are going to get down on the team because we really should be winning this match. In the early going in the second half, let's see if we can get an opportunity. Chacon drops it back to Mkubane. He finds Herrera. Plenty of space along that right wing. Toward the edge of the box. Looking back post for Lopez. It's going to sail over him. Uh, Messin is going to clear it toward the corner. And Alfaro will take over. Playing it forward. Torres nods it down. Mahecha across for Araya. And Punta Arenas still with the ball. Herrera, though, able to knock it away. Ramon in control in the midfield. Finds Marrera. Feeds it through to Lopez. Was he onside? Hopefully he was. If he did manage to bend his run, that will be his 21st goal of the year. But the flag is up, and they say it's not going to count. So the score remains 1-1. That was a beautiful play by Lopez. Just sadly, he started in an offside position. Ramon with a corner. We're in the 58th minute. Sending it in, looking near post. Gubane, save made by Ayu Lopez on the rebound. That is going to be deflected out as well. So two brilliant opportunities off of a corner. Let's see if Ramon can do it again. Looking for Innocente this time. It'll sail over his head and Punta Arenas able to clear it. Chacon will track that down. 12 6 your shots on goal in favor of Punta Arenas. They are... Controlling this match in a number of ways. Obviously, possession is not one of them. XG is not one of them. But they've taken more shots and they've gotten better opportunities. Or at least it feels that way. It feels like they are putting the pressure on us. Hernandez looking to send it. We've got about 10 minutes left. Some tired legs out on the pitch. So we will be looking to make some alterations to the lineup. Hopefully, it's not going to be too late. As Punta Arenas in control. Marrera gets in front of that one. But they're able to get it back. Uh, Mahecha shooting it from distance. And that is going to sail well over anything. Cordero is going to come in for Gonzalez. Chacon will make way for Alejandro Bran. And Marrera will cede the position of uh, the central attacking midfielder to Alejandro Alvarado. Who does have a hat trick for us. I think he still is sitting on just those three goals. Maybe he got another one. Uh, We're going to demand more from our team once again. I guess one point isn't the worst thing in the world. It'll mean that we hold off Punta Arenas. It'll mean that we widen our lead to three points. I really wish it could have been five. 1-1 one, one at your final score. Ramon got things started. Mahecha equalized late in the first half neither team finding the back of the net in the second and uh guess we're just gonna have to be satisfied with that for now we've got two matches left to go and a three-point lead on the table a victory on the road against herediano would sew things up for us and things looked really good in the early going two minutes in lopez to marrero to put uh, Saprisa up by a score of 1-0. Herediano, though, would come back. Ball fed through. Vargas beating Hernandez 1-1 one -on -one to tie the game up at 1. And 10 minutes later, off of the final third throw-in, Alianov would feed it through to Ramirez into the middle. Porus putting it past Hernandez to put Herediano up 2-1. to one. But in the 74th minute, off of the corner, Alejandro Braun beats Rivas to tie things up once again, and that's where we would end up. 2-2, your final score. A vital point, which puts us on the top of the table by three. However, we may have that lead, but it's a precarious one because Punta Arenas have a game in hand on us, which I would have said only matters if they win, but they did so quite handily over Cartagena's 7 to 1. We do remain at the top of the table by virtue of goal difference. However, 
We must win in our final match of the season to guarantee we go through into the playoffs as the top team. No pressure whatsoever. So let's reset the stage, shall we, as we head into the final match week of the season. We're taking on Sporting FC, the only other time we, as a manager, met up with them. It was a 2-2 draw on the road. We have the benefit of being at home. Punta Arenas is taking on A.D. Sarchi, currently sitting in eighth place. They, however, are on the road. If we win this match, it doesn't matter what they do. We will go through as the closing stage champions into the playoff round, which we are making no matter what happens today. If we draw and Punta Arenas draws, we go through as champions. If we lose, then we need Punta Arenas to do the same. Making things a little bit more challenging on us is the health of Edward Lopez, our leading scorer with 20 goals. Well, he hurt his butt. Well, sports hernia actually, but looks like he hurt his butt. He is not available for this match, which means we head into the final match of the season without either of our two top strikers. So Ramon is going to get that call and lead the line this afternoon. Manuel Cortez is back healthy. He will be in goal. He's made 19 starts for us since we brought him on in the January transfer window. He has been very solid between the sticks. Our back four today is going to be Gonzalez, Inocente, Gubane, and Herrera. Chacon and Aquista will pair up in the midfield. Marrera will man the number 10 position, and Quesada Thorne and Sanchez will be out on the wings. We win... And we are in. Anything else and we need some help from other folks and we don't want to rely on the other teams here in Costa Rica. Sporting coming in having lost their last two. We have been in fairly decent form heading into this final match of the season. Saprisa hosting Sporting FC. And an early opportunity from the set piece. Ramon Pineda making a diving stop to knock that behind. For a corner and an early set piece opportunity, well, a second set piece opportunity that is, for Ramon as he sends it in, but Pineda will come off his line and grab that out of the air before he can find the head of Innocenti. One shot on goal so far in the match, and it belongs to Saprisa, but Herrera and Osvaldo Perez for sporting each booking up bookings fairly early on. I am afraid before halftime to even look at the other scores around the league off of the set piece almost scoring a goal nice save made and Ramon able to clear that away for sporting all of the action in the early going through the first 25 30 minutes of this match has been for Saprisa five shots on goal to nil we just need to hit the back of the net one more time than our opposition and we should be okay we come in tight on points as you remember with Punta Arenas uh, but with a goal difference that was better by plus four. Now, Punta Arenas won 7-1 in their last match. If they pull off a similar feat, then us winning may not make a difference uh, unless we can find uh, our goal-scoring boots in the final 45. And I am going to break down and pull up the latest scores, of which there are none. We are the only... Game in town. Ramon, corner in. Innocente settling it down. Playing it out. Sanchez finds Gonzalez along the left side. And Gubane with a drive. And Pineda thought he made the save, but it didn't touch his hands. It went out for a goal kick. But we end up with a corner. Ramon sending it again. Sanchez into the middle. Herrera will just pop a weak header in. And Pineda will deal that, deal with that rather easily. I think the worst case scenario right now for us is actually drawing because we will be at the top of the table after this match is done. But we won't know what's going on around the league. Sanchez into the middle. Ramon with a header is going to go over the crossbar. What a miss. We cannot give away opportunities like that. Even though... It would seem on its face, on paper, that we are going to win this match. We just kind of need to score first. And why do I even open my mouth? Vargas ends up with it. Gubane, great sliding tackle. Herrera will take over. Up the right wing. He's got Sanchez moving it to the inside. Sanchez still with it. 
Flipping it for Casada Thorne into the middle. Ferron will handle that easily and clear it away, but Akista gets it back. Quesada Thorne up that left wing around the edge of the box. His cross is blocked. He'll lay it wide for Gonzalez. Aquista in control into the box. Quesada Thorne back for Chacon to the edge of the 18. Off of the crossbar and in. Second goal of the year for Emmanuel Chacon. And it's a Prisa 1. Sporting nil. And I was wrong. It was a technical issue that was preventing us from seeing the scoreboard. All the teams are currently in action. And A.D. Sarchi... With a 36th minute goal from Cordoba has a 1-0 lead over Punta Arenas. We still need to take care of our own business. We cannot rely on that result remaining the same. Rubiano went to the box. Ramirez Castillo. He's going to beat Cortez. And Gaynor Castillo with his sixth of the year will tie things up with 10 minutes remaining in this match. And oh my dear sweet lord. It is really coming down to the wire. Um, Hugo Cordero coming in as our left back. Alejandro Braun in to replace a tired Emmanuel Chacon. Quesada Thorne, also a bit knackered, will cede his position to Diego Mendez. Although, you know what? I'm changing my mind. Guillermo Sanchez is going to move over to the left side. Johnny Castro is going to come in on the right. Sporting with a late equalizer. And... Now we have to hope that A.D. Sarchi can hold on to their 1-0 lead and end up beating Punta Arenas. As of right now, that is what is happening. Ball fed forward, Sporting with it. Vargas dropping it back to Ricardo Guerrero as Sporting is pressing again. Threatening one more time. Mora out wide for Razak. Taken away by Cordero. Sanchez plays it ahead. Akista quickly to Marrero. Has to come back for it, but he's got plenty of space in the midfield. Castro dispossessed. Urena to Perez. He'll turn it over to Innocente. Guys, slow it down. Calm down. Relax. In fact, we are going to knock everything down. I know that change is going to take uh, place right away. Ramon, top corner, his 12th of the year to restore the 2-1 lead. It's a Prisa 2, Sporting FC 1. We've answered back. Meanwhile, A.D. Sarchi remains in the lead, still 1-0 over Punta Arena. So that match may be moot. But Vargas looking to move it forward as Sporting has gotten a bit more offensive. Innocente's clearance handled well by Sporting. Rubiano, his shots blocked. Cordero will clear. Taken over by Ferron. Up for Razak. Looking back post for Arania. And a beautiful header by Bane will put it behind a corner kick for Sporting, which we will not see. AD Sarchi still leading 1 0 against Punta Arenas. Four minutes added on will come and go. And Saprisa will take care of business. 2 1, the final score. So with the win, we top the table at 45 points, three points ahead of Punta Arenas. We have qualified for the grand final, but we're taking on Herediano in the semifinal, a team that we have dealt with so far rather successfully. On Monday, we'll figure out how these finals work. The closing stage semifinal is on the way. We're taking on Herediano on the road. We'll see how we do. We've been much more successful at home hopefully our recent form though can carry over and we can just plow ahead run through everybody and come out victorious and lift the trophy at the end if you like that video make sure you hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you have not already if you are brand new welcome in i hope to see you back on monday we've got playoff action in the primera division de costa rica and i hope to see you then until monday bye bar